Hello guys and welcome to this x86 Linux assembly tutorial on math operations and the stack. Math operations are used to mathematically manipulate registers. The form of a math operation is, is typically the operation with a register, then comma, and then a value or a register. The first register is the subject of the operation. So for some examples we can have add rex comma 5, sub rbx comma rax. Since the, since the first register, the thing before the comma, is the subject, that's what's getting manipulated. So add rex comma 5, the value in rex is being incremented by 5. Or sub rbx comma rex, the value of rex in this case isn't changing, but the value in rbx is being decremented by the value of rex. So here are some operations. You got add a comma b. You got sub a comma b. You got uh, multiply and divide. Now, if you notice the mole and div, they don't take two arguments. This is because it sort of assumes the first argument is the rax register. So you, so when you use a multiply and divide, you have to assume that the first r argument is the rax register. So you're just putting the second argument. And you also, for those, since adding and subtracting is pretty much the same for signed and unsigned, they're not for multiply and divide. So you have imol and idis specifically for uh, signed multiplication and division operations. You also have negate, which just negates the value of a register, makes it negative, or if it's already negative, it makes it positive. You got increment and decrement, which just adds one or subtracts one. Then you got add carry and sub borrow down here. This is the same thing as add and subtract, but when you add, you also add the carry flag. And you subtract, you also subtract the carry flag. So one thing I want to talk about, if, if you don't already know about this, is ASCII. Uh, this is the method which modern computers represent strings of text. Computers only store numbers, so ASCII works by mapping numbers to specific characters. A character is just a letter, a symbol, a number, etc. So ASCII uses 7-bit codes to represent characters. However, one, however, the byte, which is 8 bits, is the primary unit of information in computers. So modern computers usually store, they usually use extended ASCII, which is 8-bit codes. So extended ASCII is 8-bit codes, while just ASCII is 7-bit codes. It's also useful to, represent, to reference an ASCII table. So here's an ASCII table. As you can see, uh, here's our characters in red. If you look, okay, our character W, that's represented by the number 87. So if we store an 87, that's equivalent to storing a uh, W. So this is arbitrary. This has just been a set standard. Um, this is what people have decided upon. So here's a simple code to display a digit between 0 and 9. The digit it displays comes from the RAX register. The value in the RAX register is incremented by 48. So I add RAX 48. So I add 48 to RAX. If you check the ASCII chart, 48 is the value of 0. So 48 plus 1 is the value of 1, etc. So as you can see, if I put the value 3 in RAX, then I add 48. 48 plus 3 is 51. And that is the actual character, 3. The lower byte of the RAX register is then moved into the memory address digit. So I move AL into the digit. And as you can see, this is a pointer. So I'm moving it into the address of digit. And I'm not moving this into some register named digit. I'm actually moving that into the memory address. So uh, digit. So digit is actually defined with two bytes. As you can see, 0 and 10. I've defined digit as two bytes. But the um, since we're only loading the lower byte of the RAX register, if you remember our chart with the registers from the second tutorial, uh, AL is part, AL just says take the least significant byte of the RAX register. And since, since we're only taking one byte that we're loading into digit, it only affects the first byte at digit. So it just affects the zero. 
So if I like load the value of 51 into digit, I'm just affecting the 0 and making it 51. This 10 is actually not getting changed. If I just loaded RAX into here, it would change it because RAX is 64 bits. It's 8 digits. That's going to load or 8 bytes. So that's going to load 8 bytes at digits, which will overwrite these two and also overwrite 6 more. But since I'm just loading the least significant byte, that's just one byte that's overriding. So this zero is just the only thing being overrided. So the new line character, the 10, is actually not being affected. When we then print the two bytes to the screen, this will display the digit as well as the new line character since our length is set to 2. You can use this subroutine to display a digit between 0 and 9 by loading the digit into the RAX register, then calling the subroutine. So I can say move RAX, 7, call print RAX digit, and that will print 7 to the screen. So here's some ex examples we can use to test our math operations. So I'm going to move into RAX 6. So RAX has the value 6, and I'm going to move into RBX 2, and I'm going to call div RBX. So that will div RAX by RBX, so divide 6 by 2. And now the value is stored in RAX, which is 3. So when I call print RAX digit, that outputs 3. So move RAX 1, add RAX 4, so that's just going to give me 5. That one's pretty straightforward. So now we're going to talk about the stack. The stack like registers is another way to temporarily store data. It is called the stack because you stack data onto it. Imagine a stack of papers. As you stack one paper on top of the, the other, you can at any given time see the contents of the paper at the top of the stack. You can only see the contents of the paper at the top of the stack. So imagine you got a stack of papers and I ask you what is the without touching it what is the text on the 50th paper in the stack you can't tell me because you can't see it but if I ask you what is the text of the paper at the very top it's pretty obvious because you can just look at the top of the stack and see what the top paper says but you can't see the text within papers in the middle of the stack unless you moved the papers from on top of it off of it and a page within the middle of the stack you also can't easily remove it without removing all the pages on the top as they hold it in place. So terminology, when you add data onto the top of the stack, you push data onto the stack. When you remove the data from the top of the stack, you pop data from the top of the stack. And if you didn't realize, you can only affect the data at the top of the stack. If you look at the top of the stack without removing or adding anything to it, this is called peaking. You're basically just ta taking a peek at the, the stack and reading what's at the top without actually touching it. So stack operations. To push, you use push and you can put a register or a value. So if you push a register, that'll push the value of the register onto the stack. Pop register, that'll pop the value from the top of the stack and store it in your register that you specified. So if you remember back to my... Uh, when we talked about pointers, um, one of our pointers was the stack pointer, RSP. RSP is a pointer. It's not, uh, it doesn't hold the value of the top of the stack. It holds the address to the value. So if we put square brackets around it, we will actually be pulling the value from that address. So if we pull the value from that, the stack pointer, RSP, and then move that into a, a register, we will be storing the peak value in the register, the value at the top of the stack. So that's how we could, uh, that's how we could peak at the stack. Usually in places where, this is an important note, usually in places where you can use registers, you can also use pointers. So like right here, I just say pop reg, but you, like that would be a register like rx, rbx, something like that. But you can also use a pop and you can actually put in square brackets and a label and that will pop the value from the top of the stack and directly store the value into a memory address so a lot of places where I write registers you can also use like a pointer like here so here's an example of pushing something onto a stack push 4, 4 goes onto the stack then we push 8, 8 goes to the top of the stack push 3, 3 goes to the top of the stack 
And as you can see, the peak value always tells you what's at the top of the stack. In this case, 4, 8, and 3. Now pop. This is just going backwards. So if we pop the stack, the top of the, va the top value is gone. Pop, the top value is gone. Pop, there's no values left. Now as you can see, every time we pop RAX, um, since we're po typing pop RAX, every time we pop a value off, that value is stored in the RAX register. So as you can see, I pop 3 off the stack, and that's in the RAX register. I pop 8 off the stack, and now that value is in the RAX register. And then if I pop 4 off the stack, that value is in the RAX register. So here's an example code. If you type push, eight, push 4, push 8, push 3, pop RAX, then print the digit. Pop REX, print the digit, pop REX, print the digit, we will get 384. So we'll get in a backwards order, just like the, um, that diagram I showed, uh, demonstrated. So in future videos, we'll actually be using the stack in our code.